I was on Twitter the other day and I stumbled upon this amazing technique introduced by Klein, which is called the Klein Memory Bank, or for a shortcut, Memory Bank. And I was like, oh, what is this? This is really interesting. What does it do? And as Klein actually claims, they are claiming that this is actually going to, you know, 10x your workflows with AI agents, which is specifically the client AI agents, but this can be used with any AI agents like Cursor or maybe GitHub Copilot, stuff that allows you to customize those agents through custom rules, which most of them do. So how does this memory bank thingy kind of works? The instructions set to transform Klein into a self-documenting development system that maintains context across sessions through a structured memory bank. And like quote, quote unquote memory bank, that's what they call it, which is a pretty great name, actually reflects what it does perfectly, which is amazing. So it ensures consistent documentation, careful validation of changes, and clear communication with users. And that's like what any AI agents nowadays is actually missing or needs in order to 10x the workflow speed and, and, and be better at like generating the code that you are wanting them to generate. So yeah, the projects in here is gonna be like, you know, this memory bank kind of technique actually works for any project that needs context tracking, projects of any size, both new and ongoing development. So you can initialize your new projects or either if you've got already got a project currently in here, you can go in and ask it to initialize or start working with a memory bank of your choice. And um, yeah, long term maintenance work just to keep track of the context and make AI do all the heavy lifting for you. So I said before, this is for Klein. So Klein provides the instructions in here. And what I did is actually went through and tried to read th through this and tried it or kind of like mock the same thing, but made a little small modifications for this to work inside of Cursor AI because I'm a big fan of Cursor AI. I use it daily for my work. And uh, yeah, I wanted to do that for Cursor AI. So what they say in here in Klein, you can copy these custom instructions, which is a very long prompt with mermaid charts, which is like flow charts that explains how things work. They like kind of like split this uh, memory bank into multiple markdown files. It's clearly in here like project debris, for example, product content, Context, active context, system patterns, tech context, and progress, which technically just tracks the, prog the progress of the projects and what features have already been implemented, what features are still or in current implemented implementation and current development, stuff like that. So this will allow it to like track everything. And these rules, once injected inside of the AI engine, is going to convert it into like a memory bank or a self-documenting tool. So this one, you can go ahead and copy it out, but I don't advise you that. I've already put a guess for it. So you're going to find a link in the description below. You can go to guest rules.md in here. This is actually the cursor's memory bank. I've put everything in there. And it's curious in here, it's just like a simple markdown with flow charts, but these flow charts are perfect for the AI to understand how it should manage this context and then memory bank and split them out like across these different files from like project brief to the product content, the system patterns, the tech context. And you could read more about every single one of these and what each one does. For example, like the project brief in here markdown file is the main file in here that actually shapes all other files. And it's actually created at the project start so if it doesn't exist, defines core requirements and project goal, like big scope projects goals and source of truth of project scope technically now for the product context in here this is like why this project exists problem is solved how we should work user experience goals so every single time you don't know exactly what each file does you can come back in here even though like i mean for you as a human, you don't need that because this is mostly for AI. So there's active context in here, system patterns, for example, for the text context or tech context in here, it's going to have all the technologies you use, the development setup, technical constraints, like the dependencies, for example, if you're using package.json, it's going to list all the dependencies in here that you're using, it's going to read the package.json, it's going to put everything there for you. And progress in here is going to tell you what progress have you already done in the projects, what's left to build, current status, and known issues. And all of these together are going to build the memory bank. And of course, the file in here, the rules in here are going to tell you how to kind of like change or modify those files, how to create them, how to keep them in sync, how to update them. Every time you ask Cursor like to, oh, update me this feature, or update this section of the website or something like that, it knows how to update the documentation or the memory bank alongside that because that's very, very crucial. All right, so going back to Cursor in here, I've got my projects, Roast UI projects. If you're not familiar with that, I've already like covered these projects on a separate 10 hours video for implementing this from zero to 
deployment to get your first uh, payment through Stripe, you can go ahead and check it out for roasting user interfaces using AI. But if you're in cursor in here to put the rules together, you can go into cursor settings. You're gonna find the settings in here. Let me just put this one like this. So there's a plenty of stuff. Uh, you can go to rules and as clear as in here for user rules, the, these preferences get sent to the AI on all chats, composers and command key sessions. So this is actually what you want to send to the AI like every single time you start a new session to make sure it is like it knows of the memory bank and it's gonna utilize the memory bank on the files and reads them through, which is very important of course. So just copy paste that one, you put it over here as is, as marked down and that's it. Pretty much that's it. All you need to do for setting up in this. Uh, if I put any modification, you're gonna find it in the gist in here, so if you find any better ways to do it, but yeah, all good. So this is actually all you need to do for a cursor and for asking it to start the memory bank stuff. So I've already had it, this chat in here to initialize and all I said is initialize memory bank. That's all. And I'm using Cloud 3.7 Sonnet thinking and it started doing that. As curious in here, it started to read the MD file. It started reading all the directory or the current directory in here, all the files inside of it, the pack.json, uh, the SRC, for example, it created the directory for me, like the memory bank. And it started putting all the files together, like projects brief, uh, you know, projects context in here, there is system patterns, everything. It created all of those for me and even put the cursor rules in here, which I believe with the new recent version of cursor, they've changed to like a directory, but this is still supported. You can change that, whatever, but this is still supported as I said before. Now, it created this folder for me, which called the memory bank. As cruise in here has active context, product context, progress, projects brief, uh, system patterns, and tech context. So for example, if you go on the project brief in here, you're gonna know like, oh, project brief, it's called Roast UI. It's have an overview. So Roast UI is an innovative tool that provides AI-driven analysis for UI UX designs. Its primary purpose is to help designers refine their designs by offering comprehensive insights and quickly producing enhanced layouts using AI. So it puts all of that. So there's the core requirements in here, project's goal, create a tool that helps designers improve their UI, UI, UX design. I mean, it's gonna analyze the project for you and it's gonna put everything there. But if you're starting a blank project, this still could work, of course. So is, everything's gonna be like empty in here. Maybe you could provide some context for first to start with, like what the project is. But as I said before, the memory bank is gonna be automatically updated for you using cursors, whenever you're talking to cursor, whenever you're trying to implement new features. So everything's gonna be like updated in real time as you are developing your projects, which is amazing. And if you wanna check out the cursor rules that were auto-generated for you using the memory bank, you can check that out as well. So it like it has the project structure in here, the different coding patterns we use. We mainly use like, you know, functional components with hooks, state management, we use zoo stand, uh, API patterns in here, we use server components for data fetching, style it, we use Tailwind CSS for styling with some like utilities, there's a database, we use SQLite, and as it's deployed on Fly.io in here with multi-region distribution, it's pretty good. It's like did a full-on analysis on the projects and he put a documentation or a memory bank on it. All right, so this is actually our Roast UI page in here, localhost 3000. And uh, we have one missing part that we need to implement, which is the about page in here. So this is a great opportunity to test the new memory bank because about page is like, you know, putting all things together uh, from what the app is and what it does and everything into an about page. So now if we want to test out the memory bank, how efficient it is and how cursor AI is going to handle this and how well is going to be able to create an about page for us from scratch, well, this is a, the right opportunity for that to do so. So let's go back. Let me uh, clear everything. I'm going to start a new chat in here. And I think we have uh, like a page, I think it's probably main. There are the main page in here. There's about, yeah, there you go. This is the about page. So I'm going to include this. I think this is already included in the context. So I'm going to include this in cursor in here. No, because in cursor, we don't have this notion of like plan mode or act mode like Klein does. Klein has two workflows, two work core workflows. One is plan mode to talk and actually just discuss the difference plan with the AI agents and the X mode is gonna like take that plan and implement it into like code and documentation and everything. So because we don't have that and in the kind of like the rules we've provided already, there's this core, core workflows with plan mode and X mode and both of them have this uh, mermaid flow chart in here of how things should work. I mean, we could go in and instruct cursor AI, just like 
do plan mode. So I'm gonna do plan mode just like that and actually start typing. Um, I'm gonna say, let's build the uh, about page for roast UI that is pretty simple and reflects what are the core principles of the project and the end goal to help designers and developers to create better UI UX designs with AI. Okay, so I'm gonna click enter in here. Hopefully it's gonna do plan mode for us. It's gonna enforce plan mode. I'm, I'm using 3.7 thinking, Sonnet 3.7 thinking. Screws in here, it's reading uh, the different stuff, the different files, the design system aspects. So I'm gonna give it some time in here. Uh, so it looks like he failed and he went straight into put implementation, even though I specifically stated that I want plan mode. So uh, let me try to do this a different way. So I'm gonna close this out. Uh, I think we have, I think they have implemented something. So let me just go ahead and uh, completely disregard that. Yeah, so I reverted off the file in here. I'm gonna start a new composer. And after this, I'm gonna do please do the planning first before jumping into the implementation. I'm gonna say use plan mode, okay? Let's hope this time it knows what plan mode is and it kind of like reads the rules we've put. Um, so yeah, there you go. Now it reads the memory bank, which is amazing. So I think it, it, it got what it needed and it knows that it reads the project brief, the product context, the system pattern. So I think we're one step closer to uh, having fully autonomous things. So sometimes it doesn't read it, but specifying it like this, it looks like it does. Hopefully Cursory now will allow like different modes like climb does, because I think that is incredible if I want to like toggle, you know, between plan mode and, and ax mode. Uh, but nonetheless, this is pretty good. All right, so it looks like it got us a plan. So plan for Roast UI about page implementation. Uh, there's the overall structure, there is the content sections, uh, design elements in here, implementation approach. So it puts everything in a really well way. Uh, it, even it put like the different sections that we're gonna put inside of the about page, like the hero section, the mission and vision, uh, how it works, core principles, team and background, and call to action to you know, try the Roast UI dashboard. And, uh, but unfortunately he didn't stop just for planning and like ask us, oh, do you wanna implement this? I think we have to specifically tell it to do so. Cause I had occurrences before where I specifically had to tell it, do not implement any code just yet. Just discuss the plan with me. Then I'm gonna tell you when to implement the code if the plan is pretty good. So yeah, that one, it, it didn't cut it, okay? It just went straight into implementation, but still fine because I believe the plan in here looks pretty good. So there's no harm into implementing that plan because it feels pretty nice. Uh, so yeah. So let me check the code real quick. So we put this about page index. It's using CVA in here as the rest of the project, which is great for clean code. Uh, step item, principal card. There's this about in here, mission section. Okay, it looks, uh, well, I don't know. I gotta, I gotta check out how it looks like first in order to judge, but yeah, it looks pretty structured. I don't know why this, this class name does not exist or something. What is this exec icon? So, oh, okay. Yeah, it doesn't have a class name, unfortunately. So, so if we go back and check out the about page in here, well, honestly, it's so like better than I expected it to be because AI is not really that good in designing and being creative. So yeah, revolutionizing UI UX design with AI. So there's our mission, how Roast UI works, uh, there's the core principles in here, which is in a really nice cards in here, our chatsy and cards, I believe. And there's like built book developers for designers. And there's like view projects on GitHub, missing uh, some sort of like icons here and there. And there's the CTA in here, try Roast UI now, which is gonna take you to the playground, which is amazing. And there's the footer. I mean, I love this. There's one missing piece that I could think of right now, which is, uh, let me ask it to do so. So he's trying to do the LinkedIn. Oh yeah, I think I stopped midway through this. So I gotta run the command. So let me just run the command for this one. This will do the LinkedIn and I think it will detect any issues if there are any. So the LinkedIn command didn't reveal any specific errors we're seeing. Let me fix this issue what icons about the components. So it, tried, it knows about the icons issue that I was just describing, which is amazing. I'm gonna click resume here, so. All right, so it looks like you fixed the icons issues. I'm gonna just straight through, accept the file in here. So it looks pretty good. Uh, 
Now, there is one thing missing, which is the nav bar on the top in here that is completely missing. So I'm gonna indicate in here, include the nav bar in the about page as well, okay? So, I mean, the nav bar is a reusable component I've put together before. So it, it just matter of like rendering the nav bar inside of the about page and probably that's it. All right, so it looks like it imported the nav bar in here and it's, and it's uh, rendering it. So let me check if it is rendering that. That's, it is, good. Uh, back, the nav bar is right over there. Just not it's in here, it can access my dashboard and everything. Yeah, everything looks pretty good in here from like an about page perspective. Uh, I can go back in here, I can go back to the about page. Well, there are some adjustments I could make, but I'm not intending to make it perfect in this video. I just wanted to give you guys how to 10x your cursor AI, uh, sort of like workflows and how to work better because context is key in the AI word. So if, if the AI doesn't know what context or anything about your project, it's not gonna be able to efficiently implement the project. Or if you have like constraints in there and you're not telling the AI about it and the AI doesn't, well, I mean, it, it's gonna completely avoid the constraints, right? And it's just gonna go straight through. So yeah, context, believe me, I've been working with AI for a long time now. And uh, the one thing that I never regret is providing as much context as possible to the AI or LLM I'm working with. And this way, you know, keeping the documentation all in one place in like the memory bank, the memory bank way uh, in, in markdown files specifically, because it's super readable for you, like a human can read and modify that one as well. It is amazing. So let me know guys what you think. Go ahead and give this one a try. Uh, maybe clients one is better. I haven't tried clients one. So let me know if you did and by any chance, so let me know in the comments. But this one is amazing. I know with some improvements, this could be way much better. It has huge potential as far as I can tell. But uh, yeah, anyway, guys, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, don't forget to go in and check out their Roast UI in here if you're interested. Roasting UI designs. There's a new features coming out to this with free trial for people to try it out. But if you're also interested in uh, clean code in React, which a lot of people loved already, like by thousands in my previous videos, you can go and grab the Solid React book in here on solidreact.dev. But until then, thank you guys for watching. See you all hopefully in the next one.